is the Block Party in Minecraft podcast, episode 92. We're your hosts, Bearded Sloth and Little C. Today, we're going to go on an educational journey through the pixelated realms of Minecraft. We are recording this live with listener participation via Discord chat. That's right. Today's show includes Minecraft and education, the past week in Minecraft, and your listener questions. Class is in session. Check out theblockpartymc.com to enjoy our content, including our amazing YouTube channel, our Bedrock add-on packs, all the ways to listen, and so much more. Howdy, little C. Hello. Welcome. It's another Friday evening. What is it with us recording these on Friday evenings? I don't know. It works out really well, and we're able to release it at, like, noon on Saturday that way. So and you have so that a way better Saturdays chance. Saturdays are easier to plan out. That's right. And like last week, we ended up at Sweetwater Sound. And tomorrow, we're going to end out up at Sweetwater Sound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and I think we're going to be talking about that on the After Hours show, some of that stuff. So, that'll be fun. It was a great time. But I'm glad to be back in the studio with you this week. Yeah. And we're talking about Minecraft and education this week. Does that really go together? I don't know. We'll have to find out. All right. We ask you guys, the listeners, these questions. What's the most creative way you've used Minecraft in an educational setting? How do you think Minecraft can be used to teach skills beyond just computer programming or game design? What subject areas do you think Minecraft is best suited for in an educational setting and why? Minecraft has been used in some schools to teach students about sustainability and environmentalism. How do you think Minecraft can be used to teach other important values such as empathy or community building? Some educators have raised concerns about screen time and addiction. When using games like Minecraft in the classroom, how do you think these concerns can be addressed to ensure that Minecraft is used responsibly and effectively in an educational setting? Right, and we got a few responses. I find that so funny. To ensure that Minecraft is used responsibly. Yeah, I have a lot to say about that whole thing. So you you guys definitely will want to stay tuned for that. I have a different take than I think most people do on that. All right. We got comments from you, the listeners. We appreciate that. Be sure to check out our Discord every week for Topic of the Week. I post a new one every week. And you guys can comment. And don't forget, you can leave us a voicemail. You can text us. You can email us. We'll get all that info to you out a little bit later. The first comment comes from Dragon Shoes 17 I know the PR folks at Mojang are always pushing environmentalism as a component of Minecraft. But it really just isn't. Everything in Minecraft can be burned to the ground and started over from scratch. Ecosystems do not interact with each other like they do in nature, and all mobs regenerate naturally. There is zero sense of conservation and consequences within the game. On the other hand, survival mode does teach hierarchy of needs and self-preservation, and multiplayer teaches rule of law, governance, economics, and even urbanization and city planning. For some reason, those aspects don't make it to the front page Mojang News. Though I'm sure there's no particular reason for that. I hear you, Dragon Shoes. I know exactly what you're trying to say there. I kind of agree. It's just a game. Do we have to be all like environmentalism about it? Or can we? I mean, there are some factors that we probably should teach and things like that. But they do seem to push it. And it they act like they're making the game all about that. And it and, I like your point. It really just isn't. I like playing Minecraft, you know, thinking of it in that way, because it allows you to kind of, I see this as if I'm building a base somewhere, I don't really want to take down all the trees and flatten everything out, even though I can, and there's no real consequence. I still like to preserve some of the environment to have that nice looking area. So I think that is kind of cool to play that way. Yeah, and... I I definitely play that way. Like if I take down a forest, like you said, I do replant trees. I always want to replant trees and try to keep the natural landscape as much as possible. And we've even talked about it before. My natural build style is to build to the land instead of just demolish. That's usually what I prefer. Now I've done both ways though. And I do get that there isn't really any 
major consequence for taking down all the trees or killing all the polar bears or whatever you do, right? Why would you kill the polar bears? It's That's a good way so... to get fish. Wait, what? They have a drop? They do. Or, you know, horses. Great way to get leather. You can do that in real life, too. Uh, hmm. No, no, no. I am not taking you to my grandparents who have horses anymore. But that just brings up a great point, right? Part of the reason they didn't want, like, sharks in Minecraft is because they don't want to teach people to kill sharks or whatever. But then horses, they have a good drop, actually. Leather's kind of important, especially early game. Someone in our live chat, the number one goon, also known as g Bows, just put, I want horse meat brought to the game. That's just wrong. Man, our listeners are crazy. Now, let's go back to Dragon Shoe's comment here. And she did say it does teach a whole bunch of stuff like self-preservation and multiplayer, teaches the rule of law, all that stuff, right? And we definitely see that like in Jericho SMP, for instance. We, I've talked about this, the economy of Jericho. There's a lot of people, especially early on, season two, I remember this kind of not an argument, but a debate going on. A lot of people wanted to give the new players all this stuff and things like this. Well, I'm more of a capitalist, I guess. And so I want people to earn it and then make an economy, have shops, things like that. And we were kind of teaching some of these kids coming in, most were younger, and, you know, kind of how this works and why this works. And, oh, okay, so if I go do this for an hour in mine and I gather something that you want, it has value, and then you give me something back that I want, and it creates a great economy. And that's something that was taught. I'm pretty sure everyone knows how capitalism works. You walk into Walmart, you give them this green paper, and they give you Doritos. Bam. Yeah, it's something like that. There. There's your whole economic class taught by Little C. Yeah, and there's so much things like that, and the socialization, and things that come with that. Now, the city planning, we've tried that in Jericho, for instance, a few times. It Just, just play city skylines. doesn't work out too well. I, I, I think people don't want to actually do the work, I think is what it comes down to. Or nobody wants to step on other people's toes and things like that, I guess. Our next comment here comes from Holy Bookworm. I have never actually played the Minecraft Education Edition, but the game itself can be quite educational. It teaches creativity, real life awareness, you get hungry, need to eat, and is lifelike in many ways. I think Minecraft is good for many areas, especially like building, construction, architects, Kind of fun to try something out in general terms before actually building it. I could definitely see the game being useful in a classroom setting. Now, the first thing she brought up was Minecraft Education Edition. Now, they, yeah, there's a whole edition just for an educational setting. Now, I haven't really played around with it too much. Have you played around with it? I've seen things really. and stuff, and it looks really good. And it was meant for that to be placed in a school setting. It's just Minecraft with chemistry items. But Holy Bookworm, you bring up a great point. If you don't eat, you get hungry, and then you need food. So I didn't actually know this until I started playing Minecraft, and it has helped me so much in life. Right. I mean, these details that Minecraft taught me to eat, yes. I. How did I ever live before I knew that? Crazy. Now, that's an interesting point, too, is do people learn how to build real-life buildings based on what they're doing in Minecraft. Considering that you can have a floating tree, probably, honestly, because I have seen so many floating trees, it's one of the new trends in architecture. I probably use the opposite, but I wonder if people use, like, ideas or play things out just to see how it would look, and maybe real architects out there, if we have any listening let us know if you use minecraft to help you in your there work. was a youtuber well a youtube channel who had real life architects and engineers play minecraft and try to build a house okay that's pretty cool and holy bookworm i'm so glad that you agree that minecraft is useful in a classroom setting isn't that so good so now i can just play minecraft all day long and count it as school there you go i think that's what she's saying little c i think you you've got something you wanted now 
All right, we have another comment here from Faded Daddy O. My daughter and I have tried out the chemistry add-on and the coding system of Minecraft Education Edition. The latter is very, very cool. You can program with drag and drop blocks or JavaScript or Python and switch back and forth with the click of a button, which is a good way to see how it all works. It is awesome that homeschoolers and after school clubs can now use it too. In regard to screen time and addiction, we all have to learn how to enjoy our hobbies and activities while balancing work, school, and life. Addiction is not limited to the young. School is a great place to learn these life skills, and I believe Minecraft is an excellent platform to do this with. With enough support, like helpers who can watch children in and out of the game, teachers can guide and help students learn how to work together and not be destructive. And there is a lot of content in the marketplace by educators, so busy teachers don't have to figure everything out from scratch. I hope Minecraft gains traction in education. There's always going to be that one kid in the class that just figures out how to get TNT in the map and blow everything up. Yeah, just doing the lava casts everywhere. Or the really, and, or yeah. the Minecraft nerds who are just speedrunning the game while everyone else is trying to do chemistry class. And the number one goon from our live chat here says, it's him, that's him for sure. And Wire Guy says, but destruction is fun. I agree, Wire Guy. It can be fun. But not in a school setting. But I guess it takes all of us out here. We're all a little different and have different personalities. I think when it comes to addiction to Minecraft, Minecraft is very addicting. I have no idea what you're talking about, little C. No clue. Have you ever talked about something other than Minecraft for a long period of time? Minecraft is life. Don't forget that. And I can prove that because when I was doing something today, I was looking at the ground and it was in a field and it was squares. Everything was perfect squares and it looked like Minecraft. There you go. You just take a block out at a time. Yep, totally. Is that how you dug a trench in the fields out there? <laughs> uh, I wish it was that easy. Right? Yeah, Minecraft makes that stuff a lot easier, doesn't it? Faded Daddy O, I really like the fact that you pointed out that you can learn. Um, programming and coding and things like the javascript or python and switch back and forth and stuff within the game that's really cool i might have to try it out a little bit further now all right those are the comments we got this week for topic of the week really appreciate all those comments let's go ahead and get into our thoughts in my experience with minecraft i've dabbed in basic logic gates using redstone although i haven't delved too deep into computing however the game has always intrigued me in that regard one of the most significant things i've learned from minecraft though is the development of social skills through interactions with all different types of players it's exposed me to different perspectives and taught me lessons about human behavior and both positive and negative in that sense we've had a lot of different people come through jericho smp for instance and it's taught me a lot and it taught me probably more about myself than anything running this. And it's been a great experience for me there. Now, if I kind of think about my communication practices and things like that and socializing and running Jericho, and even though it's not directly part of Minecraft, I've actually made an effort to consider how others react to a lengthy post, let's say in announcements or something. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about here, Little C? Oh my gosh, you think his responses here for TVP stuff is long? You should see his Jericho announcements or the DMs he sends me. Now, I have actually learned by doing that in communicating within game and things like that, uh, try to be more concise and clear with the way I communicate. And I've been trying to shorten them a little bit, but I have a lot to say and it's all important info. Now, when I think about video games in general beyond Minecraft, I've actually thought about this a lot in my life because I've been around video games pretty much all of my life. And it's been a source of education for me in many, many ways. For instance, Managing finances. I've actually learned that skill very well 
from Sim City, like balancing the city and everything and balancing the budget. And that's really important stuff. I learned that from a video game and there's other games driving. So I'm a professional driver. I drive a semi truck all week long and I actually learned a lot about the physics of how cars react and in different turns and speeds and things like that. I learned that from Gran Turismo and especially in driving in different weather conditions or like gravel or snow or rain and how things react differently. I think more people out here, because I see all kinds of driving all the time, I think more people can learn from video games. Yes, there are definitely a lot of people that need to play more Gran Turismo. That's definite. All right, let's get on with the debate about screen time. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's too controversial. No, I really when I think about this, I really have to question the reasoning behind people requesting screen breaks. What truly is their motivation? The people making you do that teachers, parents, whoever. Now, I understand we need to prioritize homework or work. And I, but I believe screens in general in our world today actually help our productivity overall. Well, we have all this information at our fingertips. So you, if you're trying to get something done, it makes it so much easier and efficient. Yeah, I think we need to start looking at screens and things as a tool more than a hindrance. Now, of course, there's people, you know, this is just generalization here. and but Minecraft, watching the screen isn't the problem there. Are you learning? Are you actively doing something? If you're just staring at the screen and you're doing all lava casting or TNT blowing up and that's all you're doing all day long, yeah, that might be a problem, right? But it's not the screen that was the problem. Yeah, it's never, I mean, I don't know. I get headaches if I look at screens too much. Right. Now well, that's not a... as much because I have glasses that have blue light filter. Right. So there again, it wasn't the screen necessarily. Well, it was the screen, but there but, was a fix for it. That's right. And I kind of feel like we should be able to overcome that. I think we're not going to get away from screens in this world overall and be a productive member of society anymore. Anymore. And and so I just I have a problem with saying, "Oh, screen time's bad." Because I hear that a lot, right? You hear that for especially an older crowd or whoever. The way I see it is learning social skills, coding, computer logic, nurturing creativity, and even exploring like new ways of knowledge are all possible through screens and those activities. Like watching funny cat videos. Very educational. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I just overall don't label screen time as the issue. I believe it's more about making a conscious choice how you allocate your time and how you prioritize what you're doing. Now, if it's taken away from something, of course, you know, that's bad. If it's taken away from your real life stuff or whatever, yeah, put it down. No, yeah. it's good because it allows me to escape social situations. I could spend this time being out with friends. Or I could spend this time playing Minecraft. Obviously, Minecraft wins. And there is nothing wrong with that because Minecraft is life, as you've stated. There you go. Minecraft is life. Yeah, no, I'd much rather hang out with friends than play Minecraft. Yeah, but you've met some friends, right? You have real, I would say, friends that you talk to or whatever, and you've met them through Minecraft, right? Yeah. A shared interest in Minecraft. So that's another thing. That's a social thing. That's a good thing. Let's see what's your thoughts on this topic overall. I've learned a lot about the real world. From Minecraft, I really enjoyed the learning videos, I guess you could say, about the mangrove swamps when they added them. I thought those were really cool. They went to real life mangrove swamps and did videos on what the actual area is like and kind of the things that live there. And I thought that was really cool to learn about it since it was being added to Minecraft. I love learning stuff randomly. I feel with the new updates, when they add new biomes or new animals that are from real life, I think they are trying to educate people more with it. And I think that is cool. Like a uh, axolotl? Yes. I never knew about those until Minecraft added them. Right. And even like mangrove swamps, right? 
like I've I knew about those things, but I didn't know as much as I know now. I have looked into that or the different ores in Minecraft. Like I hear an ore like lapis lazuli, for instance. And I thought it was a made up thing when I started playing Minecraft. And then all of a sudden I see it referenced in real life somewhere. That's really cool. I've learned all kinds of stuff like that. Now it's time for in the past week in Minecraft, all info from Minecraft.net. All right, we've got a few of them. We're getting closer. Minecraft Java 1.20 pre-release 2. Oh, Came man. Out. I'm getting excited. Came out Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. Changes here. Game will now display message box on startup if user enabled text-to-speech functionality, but it is not available. Item Minecraft Air can now be used in data pack recipes to denote an ingredient that will match an empty slot. They have a few fixes here. There's no new features in this. I just want to point that out. We're at the point where they're just fine tweaking it. That's what these pre-releases usually are. I don't think we're going to see any new features on these kind of things from here on out. But the fixes they have, and usually Java Edition has, these are the problems, and this is what they fix. Dispense boats and rafts get stuck inside of dispensers used to place them. I think that's a really, really old one there, and they finally fixed it. I always thought it was by design. Hmm. Changing the name of an item and then emptying the text field in an anvil doesn't make the rename unavailable. Keeps last non-empty name on output item. Command feedback messages are unnecessarily created during function execution. New potion effect GUI doesn't work when using programmer art. Some words within several command feedback messages are always pluralized. Is pluralized actually a word? What do you mean? Of course that's a word. Pluralized? Yeah, that's Is a it very... plural or not? I don't that's know if I've ever... That's a common word. Okay. I, I don't think I've ever used it that way. You have never taken Make it plural, ninth grade English, But I don't think you? I ever said pluralized. That was a long, long, long time ago, little c. Ninth grade English. Writable entities that can be steered build up fall damage when on climb, climbable blocks. I'm having a hard time with English today. Oh, man. Slash execute if loaded does not guarantee entities are loaded. Player can fall through scaffolding when loading a world. That's a bad one. You log out, you're on a scaffolding pillar way up in the sky, and you come back, and you're falling. Oh, imagine on hardcore. Oh, Ooh. I would just Ooh. quit Minecraft forever. These are these were on Java, so... Hmm. Minecraft movement is not reliably detected by skulk sensors. Shield doesn't block TNT explosion. And good thing they fixed that. The command block GUI remains open when the said command block is destroyed. Random skylight underwater where it shouldn't be. That cuts off at the chunk border. All right, that sums up the pre-release, so they're getting short, too. Oh, man. We actually had a Bedrock Stable release, an actual release this week. I wasn't quite prepared for that when it came out. That's Minecraft Bedrock 1.19.83. Came out Wednesday, May 17th. 2023. Just some fixes on this one. Fix several crashes that could have occurred during gameplay. That is so shocking. I, so I was listening to another podcast and they were talking about, they think they just put it in there. That way they can't be held accountable if nothing got fixed. Maybe. the inv- and, and it makes them look like they've been busy. Yep. Yeah, Even that. though they've just been sitting around playing Minecraft Legends. <laughs> right. Pretty much. The inventory cursor no longer snaps to a random spot when flicking the left thumbstick. Fix custom textures that override Minecraft blocks with auxiliary metadata as a list of textures. There were several fixes to custom spawn eggs, and I think this did fix the problem if you were using like Foxy No Tails um, mini block add-on. I think this is part of what's going to fix that, what broke it, and I'm pretty sure Foxy is working on that. I know a lot of server owners, realm owners and stuff, they use Foxy's mini blocks and mob heads and it was broke. And this was the reason why I think it's all being fixed. I think I heard Foxy say that it 
all be fixed for 1.20. All right. And then they snuck another one in, and that's Minecraft Bedrock Beta in Preview 1.20.0.25. This came out Thursday, May 18th, 2023. Features and bug fixes. Oh, man, this is a long one, little C. Oh, I don't know if I can handle it. Fixed issue with touchscreen world interaction when a non-default field of view in video settings is used. Players are no longer forced to stop flying when forced into spaces with no room to stand. Improved response to mouse slash trackpad input on Chromebooks. That is such a weird one, that last one. How did they know that just Chromebooks were having an issue? Do they have a different type of little movie mouse thingy? Well, uh, yeah, well, somebody had to report it, and there's actually a bug report number here. It's MCPE168908, and so somebody reported it, and somebody else looked into it and fixed it. So it's amazing, but isn't that cool when you have such a large community of Minecraft players, they can find the bugs for you. Yeah, and what do the devs even do anymore? They fix those stuff that we find. But Sometimes. They, they just release whatever, and then we find them, and then they go through and fix them. Yeah. Hey, that sums up what Mojang's been up to. What have we been up to? I don't know. What you've been doing, Little C? I have been working more with the farm work a lot, and that's been taking a lot of my time. That's been a lot of fun. Definitely, we'll talk about that on the After Hours more. Make sure to subscribe to that. Yeah, and I guess we got to change your name. You're Farmer C now. Farmer C. Farmer C. I need a Minecraft skin that has like overalls and something on it. That'd be funny. I've not really had time to play Minecraft or do much video work this week. I have only have a few more days left to school, and I plan on doing a lot of live streaming during my summer break. That is going to be super fun. I'm probably going to do a lot of different games, mostly Minecraft, but play a lot of different games, maybe do some real life streams. Like on Twitch? Yeah. Are you are you keeping your YouTube pretty much Minecraft related? Yeah, mostly okay. for now. Yeah, we'll that's see. cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to maybe you having time to edit my video or something. Yeah, no. My compact chicken cooker that video that I did. You don't tell me how you want it edited. I'm not good at editing just randomly right. well, unless we'll, I know we'll exactly sit, we'll sit and do it together then Aww. this weekend i'm glad you volunteered for that little i thing. never volunteered for it go hire a real editor all right anything else you've been doing not really i slept a lot yeah that you all that farming man it'll wear you out you've been working hard yeah all right so last weekend you and i actually ended up going to a mic seminar at sweetwater sounds headquarters okay that does remind me this is weird because by the time you're hearing this show, this already have happened. But for us, it's a plan for tomorrow because we're recording this on Friday night. But I am going to go and buy the GoXLR Mini, which I'll talk Ooh. about a lot, probably on the After Hours and next week. That's what I figure. You'll be talking about that a lot on the After Hours. So be sure to subscribe to get all those shows. Yeah. And that was really fun. And it was fun to go to Sweetwater and actually like have a reason to go and not just like shop for things but like to learn something we're talking about education and it was a great great thing to do now of course while we were there we had to look at all the expensive toys they have and all this stuff we'll never be able to afford like a eleven thousand dollar microphone oh dude it's so awesome their showroom is spectacular that microphone better make me my singing sound good my karaoke singing sound good and if it doesn't, then it's not worth it. I bet you would like the sound of these mics we're using now better than the sound of that mic. Just Probably. you personally, which is kind of funny. But now that I've learned about audio stuff since we've been doing the podcast and everything, I love going to Sweetwater Sound now. Now, as far as the seminar, it was kind of basic, wasn't it? I don't know. There was a lot of stuff I didn't know, but I'm not as mic nerdy as you. Right. Yeah, I did pick up a few new things about it, though. And then, actually, last Sunday was Mother's Day, so we had to take Holy Bookworm out for Mexican food. I like how you say we had to. No, we got to. Yeah, that's right. Give me brownies, please. Now, as far as Minecraft related, because that's what everybody's listening for, right? Yeah. They listen to the After Hours show to hear more about our personal stuff. Which is why nobody listens to it. 
It's because oh. it's about our personal stuff. Oh, hmm, maybe that's Man, it. We've hmm. been thinking of this all wrong. All right, let's get to Minecraft. I actually had to look into one of the resource packs we use on Jericho SMP, and because someone brought it to my attention finally that the end, the void, the texture in the end was all white. And it really threw you off when you went in there. Now, thanks to our famous wire guy, who is a part of Jericho SMP and a big part of the live show and everything like that in chat on our Discord, he figured out that it was actually from the clear water pack that we had installed, and that came from Vanilla Tweaks. Now, I went to... That makes no sense. I guess, I think I read somewhere that Render Dragon, which is, I, I thought that was only RTX rendering, but there's some really complex rendering stuff that fog in underwater looks kind of the same, and RTX pack makers have issues. Yeah, now I looked at the files themselves on there, Yeah, and it is under a folder listed as shaders, and I know shaders aren't really supported on Bedrock. Well, they're just broke on Bedrock, if anything. Right, so it had something to do with that, it was it was actually playable. It was fine. I personally, I kind of liked it. Uh, it, but it did. It just threw you off when you went to the end. The end. I had is to check it out. To be this super dark feeling place, and it was super bright. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It was opposite of what it should have been. And then, so I had to fix that, take that off the server. You know that kind of thing. The admin stuff I do behind the scenes. And then Wednesday from my trucking week i actually made it home wednesday night and that was like in between my loads kind of thing so and then thursday i actually got to park fairly early on thursday i thought i was going to get a chance to play lots of minecraft yeah not so much i spent time of course i finished up show notes all that that i usually do on thursday nights and also this week to I, I will say, though, I did check out shops a little bit in Jericho this week. Sometime, I forget which day it was, but I think it all stems from when I was trying to figure out that glitch in the end. So I checked out shops. I checked out my mailbox in Jericho. So I did play, for all of you haters out there, I did play some Minecraft. I should just put a bunch of random junk in his mailbox. Yeah, please don't. Everyone, you heard it here first. He wants you to take the most junkiest, useless, rotten potato-like items and put them in his mailbox on Jericho. Yeah, don't do that. And then rename them to something funny. Yeah. Do it. Mm, No. Yep. Okay. Now, I did, of course, I had to spend some time AFK at my iron farm. For 112 hours. Yeah, actually, I I wasn't on there very long, but I did a little bit of that. And then also this week... Yeah, it was this week. Actually, I, you know, I have Cash App and they have like a card for that. Well, apparently TikTok can charge cards. I was not on TikTok. It had nothing to do with me, but I got 21 random charges while we were out for Mexican food on Mother's Day come through on my Cash App and none of them were me. So I had to dispute those and I'll have much more to talk about that on the After Hours show also. And then I made it home Friday night. So that was cool from trucking. So I got a whole weekend now. I'm looking forward to that. That pretty much sums up my week. I watched some YouTube and things, people talking about the few updates here and the bug fixes and things like that. For anyone who's ever told me to go and touch grass, that's what this work that I've been doing is. My hands have been dirty. There has been dirt on my hands. And today there was even some dirt on my face. Oh, no. Did you? How did you survive? I, I almost did it. Isn't it crazy, though? Like, we can play and farm and all this in Minecraft, right? And then you go out and you do this stuff in real life. It's totally different. It's a lot more work. It's a lot more detailed. Although farming simulator is very realistic. Right? Yeah. A lot, a lot. Yeah, but there again, I'd rather be playing with my controller than being outside actually doing it. I don't know. I kind of enjoy it. Right? Yeah. But so did you do any Minecrafty things out there on the farm? The ground looked square in one area. That's and cool. And it did look like Minecraft. There you go. Minecraft in real life. 
no, Minecraft is life, so the the Earth is just made to look like Minecraft. There you go, little C. All right, let's get on to our next segment. Da 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 do. Listener questions. The first question comes from Holy Bookworm. What is a sound that drives you crazy? Um, I guess I better not say holy bookworm snoring. Uh, you can sleep in the couch on my office. Mm, thanks, little C. Honestly, right now, it is a squeak from the back of the cab of my semi-truck. It's been driving me nuts for, like, thousands of miles now. I did find where it's coming from. But trying to find the part that I need to replace, because it's basically like a rubber bushing thing, and I need to get that done, that thing has been driving me absolutely insane. That is really annoying, considering you drive so much every day. Oh, over 500 miles a day, at least, most days. I would have to say, little C, take out the trash. Is pretty <laughs> annoying, but I don't know if I can say that without getting in trouble. Other than that, the sound of computer fans scratching, which happens sometimes with my GPU fan every so often. If it's running at just the perfect speed, it'll kind of just hit the, not really hit, but it just makes this. K- 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 and yeah. it gets so annoying after a while. Right. Now, is that. It's not causing damage. I checked it when I took okay. my computer apart. I kind of looked underneath and stuff, but it's just kind of an annoying sound. Right. I think Holy Bookworm's getting kind of beat up on her question here. Both our answers were kind of about her. Maybe she should stop being so annoying. All right, no, we'll I'm make it up to, to you. Outside. Listeners, let's, let's make her feel better. Everybody go listen to her show now on the Block Party you Network. You have to go tell everyone to listen to Holy Bookworm show. They are going to stop listening to our show just to listen to Holy Bookworm show. Oh, uh, dude, if you haven't heard it yet, the Noob Corner with Holy Bookworm, it's been amazing. She's going to try to record one every week. I know she's planning on recording another one this weekend to come out next week. So look forward to that. All right, we've got another question here. LB Post 7777. If you had $10,000, what would you buy first? I would probably look for a good budget car to buy for myself as I get my full license later this year. So I feel that would be the most responsible thing. So that way I could drive myself to work or something. And I feel that's the most responsible thing. I probably would, if I had that much money, though, I'd probably just save it. All right, let's be fun here. But for fun, I would probably redo my entire setup. A new desk, a brand new computer build. Okay, so half of it would go for a brand new computer build, and then the rest would be completely redoing my office into my dream setup. And that would probably not be all of it, but it'd be a good amount. That'd get a lot of stuff done. I could spend so much money on that stuff. All right, so if I had $10,000 right now, I Probably actually would pay to get our drainage problem we've had out here in our septic sewer system, what basically. What is it with both of our answers being the responsible We're like thing. responsible. What's up with that? We need to be playing more Minecraft. That's the problem. We haven't been playing enough Minecraft. We've been doing all this real life stuff and it's making us more mature. We really need to stop that. I know. And then, yeah. And then I think I had the same answer of probably buying a second car. So you have something to drive around. Man, we're getting too responsible. I know, you're going to want to drive places and, yeah, like jobs and stuff. Jeez, what's no, up I with that? I drive so I can get away from you asking me to take out the trash. All right. Instead of me just being an old man here and being responsible. Wait, what does that make you? Are you old too? No, I'm just mature-ish. Not really. All right. Let's talk fun here. I definitely buy some cool stuff for the studio like chairs for the second and third mics and desks for the second and third mics. Those are like a must there and probably maybe different mic or or another mic for Holy Bookworm kind of thing. And just fun stuff like bobbleheads and Funko Pops and plushies and all that cool stuff. And maybe like more computer monitors or something. That could be fun. I could buy quite a bit with 10000 I think. Yeah. 
All right. So it, are you are you saying you're gonna donate ten thousand dollars? Because like yeah, that's what it sounded I mean, like. That's what it sounded like to me. No, I think what you need is more speakers. More speakers. Cover this whole wall we have here in the studio with just loud speakers, and then have some going outside too, so everyone on our whole country mile block can hear our music. There you go. Sounds good to me. Oh, I'd probably buy an on-air light too to put out in the hallway. Has ten thousand dollars to spend. I mean, they're 50. like thirty dollars. You yeah. know? Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you for those listener questions. We love answering the listener questions. That's probably my favorite part of the whole show. And, but we need your questions. So make sure you get them in and they can be Minecraft related. Those are probably preferred overall, but it's kind of fun to answer these kind of questions. I enjoy too. the real, I enjoy the ones about ice cream and food. Those are the best questions. Yeah. Ice cream and food. Those are fun, but not the same questions. Yeah. Got to change up it up with a new bit. ones. Definitely. So we want to hear from you, listeners. Send us your questions and, of course, our comments for our next topic. Who's ready? You have a drum roll over there, little C? <laughs> Get ready for the Minecraft 1.20 update, Tales and Trails. That was the worst drum roll ever. Yeah, it was and, not good oh. at all. No, not at all. All I have is like a dun-dun-dun over here at my... Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, exactly. All right. You can email us. Contact at theblockpartymc.com. Man, we have a fancy email. Or leave me a message, text, voicemail, however, at 1-260-222-7240. Man, we have a number just for the podcast. We're crazy. I know. It's great. Well, technically, Discord has terms of service that you're not supposed to be under 13. So I wanted to make sure that even our younger listeners can get either their parents' permission or whatever, email us, send us a text, whatever. Of course, if you text us or email us, let us know who you are, your gamer tag, how you want to be referred, of course. But if you are over 13 and all that, be sure. Join our Discord. So much fun over there. And that's where we have more detailed for the topic of the week. It's real easy to leave all that and your listener questions, of course. Now, if you want to support the show, you have to become a subscriber. It's the best way. You and get, it's so cheap. It, it is. It's like $1.99 a month. That's cheaper than coffee at Starbucks. Yeah. It's not like $1.99 a month. It, it is $1.99 a month. If you can go to Starbucks every day, you can spend $1.99 a month for something that is way better. Even if you got nothing, you're just supporting us. Are you enjoying the show? Is it worth two bucks to you? If not, hey, don't worry about it. No problem. I understand. We're not for everybody. But if you like our show, there you go. Help us. Subscribe. Oh, and you get something. We'll give you something for free. Is that how that works? That's an interesting sales tactic. Hmm. Then you'll get after our show, I think we're on like episode, I think we're probably going to record like 14 or something. We can't keep track of those episodes. Don't I know. You know. It's crazy, but there's a lot of them and you'll get access to all of them. And if you haven't figured it out yet, our first like 49 episodes of the Block Party podcast. Cringe. Yeah, they were, we were learning, we were starting out. Well, those are all not available to most listeners. But if you're a subscriber, you, you can get hear all the cringe, all of those episodes, too. So thank you all for your support. We do have some subscribers and that's awesome. Thank you so much. Also, of course, you can donate directly if you don't want to do the monthly thing. I get it. It's cool. We really appreciate it all. But now it's time for everybody's favorite part of the show. Holy bookworms joke of the week. Where do fish sleep? In a river bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. That was a good one. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. By the way, the noob corner, holy bookworm over there, she's doing a pun of the week. So the joke of the week, it's a pun of the week. Worse. Oh, yeah. They're good. And that show's like usually like under 10 minutes or something. It's great. All right. Great show, little C. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you, listeners, for being here. Thank you, live chat. We really appreciate you joining us while we record the show. 
Be sure to help support us by listening to the actual show. By the way, Spotify is the best way to listen to us. We love it over there. Now, be sure to tell your teacher to check out all the ways to listen. Jericho S&P Info, our YouTube channel, Bedrock Adam Packs, and so much more at theblockpartymc.com. Thank you for being here. We truly appreciate it. Be sure to send us your questions on our Discord website. Text us at 1-260-222-7240 or email us at contact at theblockpartymc.com. I am Bearded Sloth, and now I gotta eat my coffee. And I'm Little C, and I'm gonna go find something to eat because I'm always hungry.